Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. So we've got a question from a fellow boater, a uh, sail boater with a Beneteau 343. I've worked on a lot of these boats actually, uh, pretty awesome. Steven asks, Jeff, I had the misfortune of crossing the leads on my starter battery. So Steven do it himself, but someone did. What do you look for when this happens or occurs? So further context, uh, Steven says, Jeff, I had the starter repaired. Yeah, I would have started with that. The battery terminal fuse replaced, but the alternator is still not working. And then he goes on to say, Steven says, investigating the exciter for the alternator this weekend and looking for more fuses. That's unfortunate. Um, and honestly, my heart goes out to you because it's one of those things that can happen. It's a simple mistake, but it's a mistake that can never happen. Right? There's a lot of things in life that aren't too hard to do, but they can never happen. Reversing the polarity on a battery and putting the positive to the negative and vice versa is um, a recipe for disaster as this fellow boater is experiencing. So what are the things I would look like? But first of all, I want to put this into context. We're entering a world of theoretical here. I have personally never been involved or have I resolved a problem that someone told me that they had reversed the polarity on their boat um, and that they had put positive on negative and negative on positive. So where would I look? You're absolutely right. Starter is the first thing because that's actually what's connected to the battery. Starter solenoid, of course. Um, so probably the starter itself is probably fine because it's not connected, I would assume, but the starter solenoid itself is maybe something that would be need to look at. The alternator for sure, because um, the alternator is actually going to be connected to the starter solenoid post. So that actually, alternators actually saw the reverse polarity for sure. So it actually was connected reverse polarity. So that's one issue. The other issue might be the gauges. Um, now the gauges normally only light up if you turn the ignition key on, right? So if the ignition key was not turned on, then the gauges would be fine because the gauges are only energized and should only be energized if you had the ignition key turned on. Not necessarily, I'm not talking about starting the engine, but just simply going to an on state. Different boats have different systems. Some have push buttons, but at the end of the day, they can achieve it with a key. They can achieve it with a button, but if the gauges weren't energized, then you might've been fine. Now the gauges are connected to what? They're connected to sensors. The sensors on the engines are actually, again, not connected to the starter solenoid itself. Uh, they're gonna be connected to the gauges. So luckily those gauges are probably fine on your boat as well, I would assume. Again, having never lived it. And if any of you have lived this experience, we all learn from not our own mistakes, but the mistakes of others. And I truly believe that. Uh, the reason I'm here today sharing with you is because uh, many of you invite me on your boat and I'm here solving problems. And as we solve problems, I remember those problems and I give back by just sharing what I learned. And it's the same thing why the senior technician is better than a junior technician. And even if they were the same person, it's just the junior technicians don't have as much knowledge from experience as they would 10 years later. And so if they've got an open mind and hopefully all of us do as voters, then the trick is to keep on learning, both from our mistakes and the mistakes of others so that we don't have history repeat itself as too often. Um, then I would start looking at what else is connected to that battery. You know, um, are you having battery combiners that might have been energized? You know, that would have been a big problem. So battery combiners can actually uh, sense on one post a voltage. Now, some of them actually are smart and if they sense less than a certain amount of voltage, they're not gonna trigger. But I would wonder like, is my battery combiner smart enough to know to not combine to a dead battery, which would be zero volts. So that would be something else. Look at maybe seeing any sort of battery combiner connections. Um, the other issue is your alternator might be connected to um, a battery isolator. So I'd worry about the battery isolator as well. Again, all theoretical, don't know, never seen that. So I'm just sort of sh uh, shooting here from the hip as to what I would look for. I'd also look at the battery charger. That is also something I would look at. Battery charger would be another issue to look at. 
And you've got to be curious. You've got to be inquisitive. It sounds like Stephen's doing the right thing. He's sort of going in and a little bit like when there's a fire on a boat, my recommendation is you go in and you go wide, right? You can't go in laser focus because you're going to miss. If you know what you're looking for, you're not going to see the obvious. So you've got to go in there and go, oh, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? And you want to go broad so that you catch it all, right? As opposed to going in there thinking you know exactly what you're doing and you're so laser focused that you lose sight of certain things in around there that you never anticipated. And there's nothing wrong with not knowing, but the whole purpose of the troubleshooting is to look for anything that you didn't think about. So it's a great question for Steven. It does happen. I always warn my technicians that I would not be happy if it did, but you know, one day it's probably gonna happen to us too because it's inevitable that we all make mistakes and we can't be too hard on ourselves. We just don't ever want to repeat it. And I appreciate Stephen for sharing because through the mistake that happened on his boat, he can prevent someone else from having the same mistake. So thanks for asking Stephen and thanks for watching. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. If you've got further questions, uh, see the, uh, put the questions down below. We answer them as often as I can. And yes, it is me who's answering those early in the morning or late in the evening. And as well, if you've got, um, check out our website. Uh, also, there's a link down. And we've got over probably 1,400 web pages about stuff about boats. So if you're geeking out about electrical or marine electronics, you've come to the right place. Thanks for being here.